Hi, Mark Savage here. Welcome to my channel. If you watched my last video, I was going to buy a winter bike. And what did I get? Suzuki Bergman 400. 2010 model, a LO they call these. I thought this was it. Really large GB screen, great lights, excellent wind protection, leg protection. They do 80 odd mile an hour if you want them to. Great miles per gallon. Easy, basically. Easy riding and a large luggage capacity under the seat. They come with a back box as well. This one was up for £1,800. Um, has an oil leak, needed TLC. The Savage TLC I speak about. So, I wasn't leaving £1,795 for it. I put a little cheeky bid in. He came back with £1,400. He said he didn't want to give me the back box. No problem there. I mean, they're just massive under the seat anyway. Oil leak, so I could sort out. I know the panels and everything else has got to come off. Give a quick look at it now. Now, excuse the sun. It really has already had a good going over. Clean all the front wheels up, clean the discs up. The exhaust needed doing, so I resprayed that with heat paint, took that plastic cover off and sprayed that black. It was silver scratches on it. That's better. <laughs> And there we go, these are just massive, huge, nice, squishy seats. This goes back and forwards, massive under the seat there. You've got lots of pockets here as well. The dash is really nice on it. You get what your bits you want to see and say, this screen is just massive. And leg protection as well. Chrome mirrors, yeah, okay, but hey, still good. Rear wheel was absolutely filthy, it was all gunk all over it, same as this little cover bit here. This is still belt drive, but it was all gunky, checked it all out, not bad at all. Side stand, centre stand. This catch here just keeps falling, so fix that. Here's the battery, I'll uh, speak about that in a minute. And why there's uh, an oil can in here as well. Let's look at the boot space. Just massive helmet, small child, you name it, you get it in there. Air filter plug is down here on these. So they took the back box off, so I put four little screws in there, tidied them up. Now the front screen, this was all off, screen was off, and he broke the tags that go in there. So I re-glued them on, put new screws in, there's only three screws, I put six screws under here, all properly done. Clean this side and the discs as well. Job done. As I said, a little bit of TLC, that's all it needed. Then I was gonna have to take all these seat out and work out where the oil leak was coming from. This had just dripped a little bit, so it wasn't really a biggie. Spent all morning doing this, job done. Helmet on, jacket on, insured it, taxed it, put it in my name, jumped on it, went to start it, and it made this horrific starter motor noise. It was just noise out of it. Now I had the battery off, that's what I showed you a minute ago, had it on charge. Originally drop tested, it was about 12.9, but outside he showed me it started when he delivered it. Very dark, late in the evening he delivered it, and he said rather than me picking it up. Started thinking a little bit there, didn't I? Anyway, so I went to go out, pushed the button, and it was just horrific, the noise. So, let's see if it does it now. Now, I actually think the start motor is just jammed now. Now, I had one of those little starter packs, put that on it, made the same horrible noise. A jump pack, another battery, just continue making that horrible noise. I did it three or four times before, you know, I'm not doing it no more. So I contacted the seller. I contacted the seller and said, look mate, phoned him up and I explained exactly what I did. I've got no miles on it, it was only dropped off less than 24 hours ago. He said that um, maybe the battery was dead. I said I'd put it on charge while I was doing this lot. Um, so, possibly. And he said, oh, that noise, uh, hadn't, it was filthy dirty, this was really filthy, so I know it hadn't gone nowhere for a long time. And he said to me, I only made that noise with a starter motor. So um, I said, I'll give the battery a charge and see how we go. But I thought, wait a minute, a new battery's 45 pound, a starter motor's 100 odd quid. Um, and if I did it myself a lot cheaper than going to a garage, you know, a lot of money. So I just said to him, look mate, I said, I'm not a con man, but I don't mind doing it, 
if it's only them two bits, you know, 150 pound here, but I'd like to contribute towards it. I think that's fair. And he just messaged back saying, I'll come and pick it up, give you money back, which again is a good seller, but I'm out of pocket for insuring it, taxing it, it's in my name, and the bit I've done now. All in, is it better to get your money back? Uh, I've made a little loss, I suppose, I don't know, time and effort under quid, I don't know. I suppose so, but it's annoying, isn't it? I'd have rather he said to me, well, do you know what, get it done and we'll talk about it then, you know, I'll definitely give you something towards it, if not all of it, if you're doing it yourself. But I decided to say he's gonna come and collect it. We will see. But I wanted it, that's the annoying thing. Now, the wife and kids don't like this sort of bikes. They think I should be 60 year old and called Roger. <laughs> Roy actually, my daughter said. <laughs> Roy from Rochford. <laughs> Thank you for that. <laughs> Shame as I was born in Rochford. Anyway, bloody annoying. Um, I will update you, you'll see in the end of this video, what happens and when he comes here. Like I said, I'm, I'm not trying to con you, I want this bike. I wouldn't have put it in my name, taxed it and insured it otherwise, would I? Uh, I was going to pick up a Honda DeVille, a little 650, a local as well. Um, on a wide wedge, 40,000 miles, silly money. But again, I contacted him, told him last night, I'd pick it up last night, he's in bed, fair enough. I come tomorrow morning, you know, 11 o'clock, get there. Um, messaged him at 9 o'clock in the morning, no, actually 8.30, completely blanked me. I see he read the message. And then he comes back to me at 11 o'clock when I was supposed to pick it up, saying, um, oh, the other person blew me out if you want it now. I thought, nah, what's second best. I told him I'd have it. Anyway, there we go. Bergman 400, normally nice bikes. This means if he does have it back, I'm back on the uh, find again to find myself a winter bike. Lovely still, lovely sunny day in early September. Still got some nice sunny days, but it's getting chilly, isn't it? This way I thought this was great. I didn't even think about getting some muffs on here, but this jibby screen actually protects your hands as well. All round, just a brilliant bloody bike. Annoying. All in. If you are thinking of getting a Bergman, then yeah, buy one. Just make sure it runs. <laughs> Done a good job of that, you know. Cleaned it all up, heat spray. The back wheel was jammed. There's a handbrake on these, which is a cable here as well, which I freed up because that was jammed. And you can see, I mean, I washed and washed and washed this, and that's what's left. That was really, really black, heavy soiled on there. You can put your feet back on here, you can put your feet here, put your feet there. Here's your little petrol. These little glove boxes. You know, just brilliant. There's your handbrake. Dash. These have a, an FI light on these when things go wrong, but uh, hey, just not doing anything at present minute. So, with a little bit of investigating, as I said, I do have manuals, I just don't often use them. This, I believe, the starter now is jammed in. There's a little thing called the Bendix. And this, as the starter pushes in here, spins this round, and this spins out. Of course, on this, it's going to be a lot more difficult. It's not going to be a tiny little bit that pops out because it's such a big engine, 400cc, not 50. Not that I refer to this that much. Starter hull, engine completely apart to get to the nuts and bolts and cogs and that I'm guessing is the little Bendix as it was the bigger and the reducer this is not just a uh, hour getting the panels off and finding the right bolts and then getting the starter motor out and just popping the new starter motor in this is going to be panels everywhere off half the engine off if not out to get to all these cogs so this I'm not doing so two options I guess I would rather him say that he'll pay to get it fixed and maybe give him halves or get it sorted or I'll take it to a garage get it sorted and then we got halves on that way or finally just have the bloody thing back I'm leaning towards having the thing back because this is going to be hours and hours of labor uh, I don't know 60 pound an hour you're probably talking 180 pound there trying to get hold of the gears a new starter I guess that might have the cogs might be damaged all of a sudden you're looking at a possibility of a bill between three and five hundred pounds. No, it's just not worth me doing that. So it's a shame. TLC, out of pocket, a few quid. 
but it's going to go back. And that means I am on the hunt for another winter hack. I usually like riding them, and then I race up and down the road a little bit and go for little rideies. I didn't with this because it wasn't insured, he delivered it. Now I know that I should next time, you know, sort myself out. He said something funny at the end of it. He said, oh, if, uh, if you break down, you know, I could uh, help you sort out. And I thought, odd thing to say, I won't break down. I mean, I'm glad I did it outside on the drive rather than when I got up the road or got to the petrol station because it would never got started again. And this is a big old lump to push home. So there you go. It's going to go. So, one missing bike. Nice fella, though. Come and got the bike back. Give me the money straight back. Yes, TLC. It's a bit of time and some money. But I got the money back. He has said that he would have a look into getting it fixed and get back to me and if not so that the spares repair but you are looking when I looked at getting all them panels off the engine case off and get them to the um, Benix gear and the smaller gear and so on you're probably looking at 500 quid you really are so it's a bugger um, I'm glad it's all over and done with it just means I'm back on the hunt for a winter bike stay tuned like share subscribe keep watching there's a video to this ped that's coming up next week. Uh, I've delayed it slightly because obviously the winter bikes is more important. This video was 1 hour 20 um, and I kept cutting bits out and made it 47 minutes. That's still an epic video, isn't it? This one's just a nice short one. But me chatting. <laughs> right, bye. Hi, Mark. Oh, fuck. Bergman. And a large luggage pad. I wasn't going to give him 17. So this was all broke where he broke the cable bits in here. The um, little... Uh, Originally it was drop testing about 90. <laughs> lovely still, lovely sunny day. It's in the middle of uh, September now, I guess. Stay with me, you find out in a couple of seconds what's going to happen next. So, with a little bit of investigating, as I said, I do have manuals, I just don't often use them. This is jammed in now. This, I believe, the starter now is jammed in. Now on the pegs, I've got a little thing called a Bendix. So on the pegs, there's a little thing called... Now, on the pegs, of course, on this, going to be a lot more difficult it's not going to be a tiny little bit that pops out for such a big engine 400 cc not 50. it's gonna go <laughs> thanks for watching you'll we'll get problems check out my videos like share and subscribe take care of yourselves and we'll see part two no, part three of my winter hack.